and to great lengths to entertain generations of children. Well, yes, but now it's the children's turn. Here's Joe with a story that is guaranteed to put a smile on your face. A Monday morning in Bristol and two very different starts to the day. <laughs> These two worlds are about to collide. Is everyone strapped in and comfortable? Now these kids at the Beckett Hall Day Nursery are off on a special trip to see some old friends. See you there. They've been making this journey to Osborne Court Care Home once a fortnight for the past four months. Well, the idea here is simply to bring generations together to help the residents feel less isolated, but also to give the young children a sense of community from an early age. Though some of the kids still aren't quite sure just how old the residents are. Four. Thousand. 50 million thousand? Because that's a bit old. Yeah. We've got a pancake, Geraldine. First off is a bit of intergenerational pancake tossing. <laughs> and afterwards, it's time to get messy with arts and crafts. Oh, what a pretty drawing. Yeah. What did you draw today? Pancake. What colour was your pancake? Green. Green? Do they come out with some funny things? Yes, they do. No. <laughs> Give me a why do you like Frank? Because he's funny. And he was fooling around with him, something crummy. I've been away all the time. But I'm your friend. Imitation. Frankie's funny. Oh, we all like Frank, do we? I love him. I love children. Yeah. If I can have children, I'd have children every day. Seeing this, the thing that seems to work so well is just how relaxed it is. That these little four year old chatterboxes have no fear, have no formalities, they're just willing to talk to anyone, and it works both ways. The residents here want to listen, want to understand them, and that leads to a really quite a special closeness, actually, and it's lovely to observe. The visit to the idea of nursery manager Lindsay Elliott, who saw a video online of an American nursery in Seattle built into a residential home. And then we thought, actually, why don't we pilot this and just see how it works, mm -hmm. see if the children like it, does it work for the residents? And so then we went out and um, tried to find a, a setting that was willing to take us, um, and we found that here. Were there any unforeseen problems, things you couldn't have predicted that you, you came across along the way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we sort of had, had a child ask why somebody's face was melting. Right. Because, you know, the skin is different in your older age, and those are kind of conversations that can be a bit awkward. But once those barriers are broken, Lindsay says the benefits are clear to see. So Doris has always been quite a quiet resident, never really joining in, but today, Doris not only came forward, but Doris was holding hands with one of the children and talking really openly, and I think that's the first time we've ever heard Doris speak unless you ask her a direct question. I was very, very impressed with your singing, Mim. Thank you very much. I, I can remember doing uh, that sort of thing way back in 1946, uh, rather a long time ago. <laughs> The kids are already discussing their activities for the next visit, and it looks like dressing up is a popular choice. Can I take my breakfast? Of course you can. I don't breakfast. have any dressing That's OK. We've got some here, didn't we? Chantelle Bradford is the deputy manager of Osborne Court. We obviously tell the residents a couple of days before the children are coming and the mood just changes instantly. Everyone, the morning before, everyone wants to be up at 6 o'clock. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. Research has shown at least 40,000 elderly people in care homes in England are living in social isolation, with more than a quarter of those without any family or relatives to visit at all. Not everybody's got family. Not everybody has visitors. So, the, so the, the short story is, you don't really have any family visiting you, is that right? No, they all live too far away. A lot of our residents don't have a lot of children in their life, and I think the same with young children as well. Not everybody's got grandparents, so and it's nice just to swap stories, really. Then it's time for goodbyes. Bye. Bye. What difference does it make having these little four-year-olds come in? Oh, it makes a world of difference. I love them. They're marvellous. They really are. They're lovely. Hey,
<laughs> well, listen, I know it's late, but if any of those um, little people are up, let's just say thank you very much indeed. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, lovely yeah. story. Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you've got three young kids. Would they be into a scheme like that? Listen, anyone who wants to take my kids <laughs> for a few hours is perfectly welcome to, yeah. Well, we were quite surprised that your two-year-old was partly 